Hello. So in the we'll see the final uh, video lesson for this course, I will share some thoughts on uh, the role of green growth in the in the economic growth. So let me start by this kind of motivating example. So this figure illustrates the development of the real GDP per capita here in Finland from the 1975 till uh, 2021. And uh, you can see in the earlier decades, there was a definite uh, uh, growth trend. There was some, some bump in the early 90s because we had a, had a relatively deep recession due to bank crisis uh, and uh, the end of the exports to the, to the Soviet Union. And, uh, but then what is more, more concerning economists nowadays is that uh, that since the financial crisis uh, in uh, 2007 and 8 uh, there has been really no no economic growth here in terms of gdp per capita so following the financial crisis there was this european debt crisis uh, and uh, later on there has been some kind of uh, some kind of growth but again again new crisis we had the covid crisis uh, the uh, Russian invasion to Ukraine and resulting energy crisis. So uh, there has been like uh, like then a lot of question that how how could we then then resume back to some kind of uh, growth trend that was sort of taken as a, almost as a self evident in the previous decades, or is it is it that we have reached the ceiling and this is the this is the standard of living that we have to put up with in the in the long term. So Finland is, of course, not alone with this kind of uh, stagnation of growth, uh, but uh, similar kind of issues have been found in uh, virtually all Western countries. And uh, there have been various uh, explanations suggested in the economics literature. So some studies suggest uh, that there, there has been slowdown in the business dynamism uh, measured by how much new firms are established, uh, uh, what is the speed of job rotation, and so on. And uh, here are some some uh, important uh, references to this literature. So the slowdown has been also found in recent studies in the in the in Europe, uh, but um, according to my studies, uh, it's not really. Uh, something that we observe in Finland that we have we have also a lot of new firms coming up to the market. Uh, there's also exit of uh, of uh, firms, so so I do not find any signs of uh, this kind of business dynamics that could explain that uh, that uh, the slowdown in Finland. There is um, other stream of studies. One example is uh, the, the article by Jan de Locker et al. Uh, which suggests that there has been increase in market power and markups. So this is potentially important explanation in Finland because uh, uh, traditionally Finnish industry is uh, is more uh, supplying some intermediate inputs in for for industry, so some kind of machinery, and uh, and uh, and so on, but very little consumer products, and especially this uh, increase in markups has been. Uh, observed in the consumer products that there are strong brands that can can uh, uh, can uh, increase their markups. There is a lot of discussion also on the misallocation of resources. Uh, uh, the explanation for this uh, misallocation is then somewhat uh, still uh, unclear, but this is definitely something that we also observe here in Finland that uh, that uh, labor and capital resources are not really. Um, not really efficiently allocated between firms. And uh, one reason might be that uh, we have a relatively sparsely um, sparsely populated country, long distances, uh, so it's not so easy to, for example, switch uh, jobs. So the labor market is relatively thin. And uh, also maybe there is not, not enough competition in all, all of the uh, sectors of the economy. Then I already referred to this kind of measurement issues. Uh, so there's also a lot of uh, uh, discussion, or, or that's one, one of the important suggestions that why the measured growth uh, uh, tends to be very slow. However, if you think about the past 20 years, uh, 
there has been, of course, enormous improvements in the in the digital services, uh, information and and communication technology, all kinds of free apps that uh, that we are using without paying or we are kind of paying in terms of advertising revenue. But this advertising revenue might occur somewhere somewhere another another side of the world, not necessarily uh, in in our country. So um, so this kind of measurement issues continues to be a major major issue and perhaps this uh, conventional measures of GDP tend to underestimate this kind of uh, technological progress and especially this kind of uh, free services offered offered nowadays. Then one of these kind of issues that has been also suggested uh, is that, that that new ideas are getting harder to find. There is already uh, Robert Gordon was uh, was suggesting that uh, all these kind of major technological innovations have already been done, and there he refers to, for example, electricity networks, uh, uh, water and plumbing, central heating, and this sort of things, which was like huge progress compared to this uh, something that was 100, 150 years ago. And uh, Gordon's idea is that it's it's very difficult to improve upon or put make make something still better than 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 what was already already done in a little bit similar way there's also a recent article by Nick Bloom and others uh, in AER where they where they look at the um, productivity of patents production so they they find evidence that uh, that uh, cre creating new patent patented innovations uh, takes uh, takes uh, more time and more resources and and uh, and uh, sort of risk of failure perhaps is also also getting getting uh, uh, getting uh, higher but uh, as a as a as a researcher and innovator myself it's also also somewhat uh, uh, difficult to believe in this last explanation perhaps there is in terms of the patented innovations yes but uh, also I would like to hear them uh, give the citation to John Maynard Keynes, who has, uh, has said uh, that uh, the difficulty lies not in the new ideas, but in escaping the old ones, which ramify for those brought up as most of us have been into every corner of our minds. So I tend to maybe cite more in, the, in terms of uh, in the in terms of Keynes that, uh, that there are a lot of lot of new ideas but uh, but uh, escaping the old ones it seems to be a, often the problem so if we complete this kind of list then one one issue that has not attracted a lot of attention in the in the economics literature is is uh, what about the green transition and the ongoing energy transition and all the attempts to uh, mitigate and adapt to the climate change and global warming so what what is this uh, role of the green transition could be and this is perhaps an idea also that uh, that uh, how it is difficult to then escape the uh, escape the old ideas in fact so we have done some some research in this uh, this direction and let me first try to try to explain that uh, how this kind of green transition and energy transition would influence the measured economic growth so as, as we all know, there has been really huge investment in the abatement of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide. And uh, of course, this kind of, kind of uh, investments will increase the capital stock. However, such kind of investments don't really contribute to the measured GDP. And besides capital, of course, there's also a lot of labor resources, a lot of R&D, a lot of... Uh, uh, a lot of uh, resources targeted to this abatement of emissions. So if we think about uh, the productivity, the conventional productivity measures uh, that, uh, that uh, we can think about total factor productivity of TFP as, uh, as the ratio of aggregate output and aggregate inputs. So my point here is that, uh, that these aggregate inputs do capture this capital and labor and R and D resources targeted to the abatement of um, of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. However, the aggregate output, if we think about it as the as the measure GDP, then then it doesn't take into account this kind of input. So obviously, there is some opportunity cost of all these resources that are targeted to the 
to the abatement efforts. So the question then is that, what if we try to adjust this kind of total factor productivity measure? So there is this kind of notion as, as green TFP, green total factor productivity, which is trying to do that. And if we take it only, only now just the greenhouse gas emissions into account, so of, of course, there would be also, also helpful to consider also other types of air pollution, as well as water pollution, as well as uh, uh, natural resources, both renewable and non-renewables. But, uh, but if you make this exercise now for sake of simplicity, just for the greenhouse gas emissions, then the simple idea is to try to adjust this aggregate output and take also these uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, with a negative coefficient. And then we have this parameter beta that then indicates the weight of this, that how do we convert this kind of uh, um, greenhouse gases to monetary terms. So this beta would be then some kind of a shadow price for those uh, phase, uh, greenhouse gas emissions that converts this uh, quantity of emissions to the, to the monetary value. So it would be some kind of unit cost of, of emissions, social cost of emissions in that sense. So here is a simple exercise uh, for, the, for the energy sector in Finland. So where I have considered the alternative uh, prices for the, for the ton of CO2. So the time span is from year 1995 till uh, 2019. And uh, I would take the 1995 as the base year. So the, so the productivity index is, uh, takes the value of one in, in 1995. And then, then uh, uh, that's, that's the base year that we compare to the, 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 the level of, uh, of uh, productivity of the energy sector. So here in this diagram, the gray line uh, indicates the very conventional TFP measure. So this is in fact based on the on the um, uh, growth accounting. There is this uh, EU claims database uh, maintained by the the Lewis University, I think. Uh, so I have just simply taken this kind of conventional TFP as given, and as you can see, the gray line is first uh, somewhat growing, but then after the year two thousand five, approximately there is decline in the measured, uh, measured uh, total factor productivity of the energy sector. So the energy sector, uh, notice that it includes both uh, electricity and natural gas, as well as, as um, um, heating services. And there's not only production, but also transmission and distribution included in this energy sector. So it seems somewhat, con contr somewhat counterintuitive that, that, that in light of this kind of very major energy transition we are experiencing that the total factor productivity of this, uh, of this sector is in decline. At least the measured conventional measure of total factor productivity shows somehow, somehow uh, decline. And very often this TFP is taken as a, as a measure of uh, technological progress, that how much this kind of output is increasing with a given level of input. So, so it's somewhat counterintuitive that, uh, that we would experience a technological decline in this kind of sector, which is actually experiencing a major, major innovation currently. And one reason might be that this, these kind of uh, efforts to abate emissions, for example, the, the uh, increase in the share of uh, wind power and uh, solar power these days, is not, not uh, taking into account in these measures because this, this kind of uh, uh, green investments would, uh, would be included in the input, but not, not adequately reflected in the output. So now if we try to fix it, then I still keep this growth accounting TFP, but I just make this kind of simple adjustment to the data. I take into account this, uh, this kind of uh, social cost of the, of the greenhouse gas emissions. And with the light green color, I, I, I use uh, 30 euros per ton of CO2. That's a very, very kind of small price for the, for the CO2 compared to the, to the, for example, this EU ETS um, emission permits market. Then there is 60 euros per ton of CO2 is this kind of darker green line. And as you can see, the higher price we put to the ton of CO2 in this kind of green TFP measure, 
GTFB, then the more higher growth we, we, we observe. So this kind of uh, decreasing trend of GTFB actually becomes already a growth trend when we when we consider green TFP, especially when we put this higher price of uh, 60, 60 euros per ton. So you might remember that when we when we discussed this uh, EU ETS, there nowadays the prices are already already somewhere like hundred euros per ton of CO two. So this uh, thirty and sixty might be very small. What if we still increase the price and? Uh, here is then this kind of highest uh, value of 90, uh, 90 euros per ton of, uh, ton of CO2. And uh, I didn't include it in the previous chart because it is, would, be, would be like, uh, like uh, going, going away from this kind of, but, but in this, this chart, I have also included the, the price scenario of 90 euros per, per ton of CO2. So you can see that how huge growth there has been then in this kind of uh, kind of scenario. So this just illustrates that how how hugely this kind of measured productivity might be affected if we if we if we do take into account the uh, um, abatement of CO two emissions into account. And obviously, the energy sector is one of the main sources of the of the greenhouse gas emissions. So. So definitely in this sector, also the impact is, is like larger than in, in many others. But still, it kind of just illustrates that uh, how this kind of uh, uh, measurement of, of uh, economic growth and, and also, also total factor productivity growth, what kind of factors we take into account and do we take into account the, the environmental factors also, because there has been also great progress in this direction that uh, that it can can kind of influence our our gloomy picture about what is what is happening in the economy. So similarly, here is another another study I, I refer to. So at the bottom of the slide, you can see also a link to this uh, to this study done by by Sheng Dai and Sun Shou. So we look into the green TFP of the OECD countries. So, so this figure indicates then the aggregate for the all of the OECD countries, so the most wealthy countries in the world. And here is the cumulative uh, productivity growth from, from the 1990. And uh, we see that the conventional TFP growth was very sluggish in, in uh, all of the OECD countries, if we take the OECD aggregate. And we also see in this black line, which is the conventional total factor productivity, that there was this kind of uh, sharp drop during the financial crisis and after it, and then some slow recovery. But, uh, but uh, this, this conventional TFP just indicates this kind of uh, uh, sluggish growth and stagnation uh, according to the conventional measure of, of TFP. However, if we take into account this uh, greenhouse gas emissions into account, same way as in the, in the previous exercise, uh, so of course, not only in Finland, but also in other, other OECD countries, there have been great investment in the abatement of the uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So, so in this, this study, we do not take some kind of fixed prices like in the previous example, but rather we estimate the shadow prices of the of the greenhouse gas emissions uh, empirically from the data using uh, convex quantile regression techniques so if we take this kind of estimated shadow prices and the and the observed behavior of the of the greenhouse gas emissions and then calculate the green tfp then this broken green line indicates the trajectory of the green tfp growth so the picture looks much more more promising so there, there is has been a very, very strong growth trend, and also this uh, uh, recovery from the financial crisis, and uh, and this actually the rate of this uh, growth has actually even accelerated after the financial crisis, according to the green TFP. So I think this is really, really like a helpful picture to indicate that uh, that uh, despite this kind of gloomy picture of. Uh, of uh, stagnated growth in terms of the conventional GDP and conventional TFP as well, then if we take into account these massive investments uh, that have also managed to decrease the greenhouse gas emissions, uh, 
then uh, we, we see that there is actually progress in the economy, there is technological progress. It's just that it hasn't really uh, fully been uh, converted to the conventional uh, economic growth, but there, there is still progress, and particularly in what is actually this kind of currently the most uh, serious existential challenge for the humankind, the, the, the um, uh, global warming and, and, the, the, and the climate change. So I think that's uh, that's really uh, also good to to conclude the course with a more positive note. So thank you very much for for following the videos. I hope that they have been useful, and good luck for the exam if you are taking the one. Thank you and bye bye.